Here we talk about fishes. This is the most diverse group of vertebrates overall. They vary tremendously in size, shape, ecology, behavior, habitat, and this is just a huge group also. Over half of all vertebrates are fishes. Fish provide the evolutionary base for invasion of land by amphibians. Okay, so this is the precursor for all terrestrial vertebrates. Ancient fish look more like what you see down here, right? This uh, Ordovician fish, Ordovician means uh, it's the age of the fishes. Um, this is a jawless, toothless fish that just sucked up food particles like a vacuum. Most of these ancient fishes were under a foot long. They did not have paired fins. They did not have vertebrate, but they were the only vertebrates that were around for about 50 million years. So they were definitely doing something right. From these ancient fish, we have uh, evolved fish with jaws, vertebrae, fins that lead to more efficient feeding and movement strategies. Fishes are real diverse, right? But most of them have these following five characteristics. Number one, a vertebral column and skull, either cartilaginous or bony. Number two, jaws and paired appendages. Jaws will allow these fish to eat larger and more active prey. The paired fins allow for better maneuverability of the body. The most primitive fish do not e have either of these. No vertebral column, jaws, or paired appendages. Fish all have internal gills with high vascularization, lots of blood vessels, in order to extract oxygen from the water that they gulp in through the mouth. Fish all have single loop blood circulation with a two-chambered heart that pumps blood to the gills to obtain oxygen, and then that blood moves on to the body before returning to the heart. Finally, all fish have certain nutritional deficiencies. They can't synthesize aromatic amino acids. So things like tryptophan, tyrosine need to be consumed through the diet. And this has stuck with us. No other vertebrates can synthesize these amino acids either. Table 35.1 summarizes the major classes of fishes. These last two on the bottom are extinct, right? And then these two up here, the hagfish and the lampreys. These are jawless fish, no paired appendages. Uh, so they're the most primitive of fish. And then we've got chondroichthys, the skates, sharks, and rays, which are characterized by a cartilaginous skeleton. Class Actinopterygiae are the ray finned fish. This is by far the most diverse group of fish, right? So if you think fish, if you are thinking of a specific fish, odds are it's a ray finned fish. Salmon, trout, uh, perch, bass, um, goldfish, redfish, catfish, right? All these are ray finned fishes. These guys are characterized by um, a bony ray within the fin that skin is stretched over. Lastly, up here we only have a few uh, lobed fin fishes, class Sarcopterygii. Um, these have a muscular uh, lobe that is, uh, wraps around bone in their fin. And these, as we'll see in a minute, are the precursors of terrestrial vertebrates. So we'll start with class chondroichthys. Again, these are cartilaginous fish, including the sharks, the skates, and the rays. That cartilaginous skeleton is reinforced or calcified with granules of calcium carbonate in the outer layers. This leads to a light but strong skeleton. That plus the paired fins that these fish have um, make them very strong swimmers. Sharks were among the first vertebrates to develop teeth, which evolved from the rough scales on the mouth skin. The skin in general of chondroichthys is covered in tooth-like scales that are continually lost and replaced. That's how these teeth are too. These teeth are easily lost, but they're continually replaced. They sit atop of the jaw instead of being set into it, embedded into the bone like, like we have. So easy come, easy go for these teeth. And when we look at a shark's jaw, there can be up to 20 rows of these teeth developing. 
Okay, if you go to the aquarium, um, you can see this as well. Sharks and bony fish in general have very well-developed sensory organs that help them detect prey. One of those is the lateral line system, a series of sensory organs that projects into a canal beneath the surface on the skin on the side of the fish. It runs along the whole length of the fish's body. And this responds to pressure waves. The movement of water past the fish leads to water moving into this canal and then the fish is able to detect that. It's a precursor to hearing, right? Our uh, hearing sound uh, moves through, through air pressure. Reproduction in sharks is unique in that internal fertilization is the rule, um, as well as live birth, right? Sharks have especially long gestation periods and relatively few numbers of offspring. So they don't have, they're not reproducing very much um, in general. This means that they can't compensate for the overfishing that occurs. Many sharks are now endangered because of that. Bony fish. Right? Most fish, oops, most fish are bony fish. These guys evolved at the same time as sharks, but they went with a different strategy. Instead of that lightweight cartilaginous skeleton, Bony fish have a heavy internal skeleton that's made completely out of calcified bone, mineralized bone. The advantage here is that this bony endoskeleton provides a rigid scaffold against which strong muscles can contract. There's also plates and scales that are made of bone. Bony fish also have highly mobile fins, so they're quite capable of getting around as well. Bony fish have an important adaptation called the operculum, which is a hard plate covering the gills. This, is a, uh, this structure allows water to be pumped over the gills whenever the mouth is opened and closed. So that means that the fish can sit in one location and still have oxygen-rich water pouring over the gills. Another important evolutionary adaptation is the swim bladder. This is a gas-filled sac that allows bony fish to regulate their buoyant density, um, basically where they sit in the water column. So that means that bony fish can remain suspended at any depth, whereas sharks need to move around, otherwise they will sink. The primitive swim bladder was an out pocket behind the throat that fish would fill up just by swallowing air from the surface, but the more um, evolved swim bladder is this structure right here. It is a internal structure that is filled by oops, where's my pointer here? the gas gland, right? So gas gland removes gas from the blood and injects that gas into the bladder whenever buoyancy is needed. So whenever the fish needs to move up the water column, if the fish wants to sink, that gas can be reabsorbed, reabsorbed into the blood using the oval body. There are two major groups of bony fishes. The ray fin fishes, class Actinopterygii, are most fish. These fish all have parallel bony rays that support and stiffen each, each fin, and there are no muscles within the fin. It's just a, a thin membrane um, that's stretched from, fin to, uh, from bone to bone in the fin. Lobe fin fishes, class Sarcopterygii, these guys have paired fins, and each fin consists of a long, fleshy, muscular lobe that wraps around this central core of bones. That central core has fully articulated joints within it, so the bones can move. Plus, there's bony rays at the tips that move independently. This structure of fin is better adapted to moving in shallow, murky water. It's almost certain at this point that these are the ancestors of amphibians and thus all terrestrial vertebrates. Lungfish more closely are more closely related to amphibians than they are to other fish. And their fossils fill in gaps. There are transitional fossils. A really good example of that is Tiktaalik right here. 
right? Tiktaalik was discovered in 2006. It has scales and gills like a fish, but it also has a neck and forelimbs like an amphibian does, and it's thought to have lived in shallow water. So here we got that ray fin fish, and that's a good example here, good view of that ray fin. And this is our lobe fin fish. This particular lobe fin fish is a coelacanth, which was thought to be extinct until it was discovered in 1938 in a fish market in Madagascar. You can see here the structure of its fin, right? So central coral bone, it's fully articulated, meaning that there's joints here, and then there's rays at the tip that allow for fine movement.